A child's education can be one of the most crucial parts of their development. One of the options for parents is enrolling their children in charter schools. But are they fair and how do they work? Not on your side, Brandon Truitt joins us now. And Brandon, there's a lot of mystery surrounding North Carolina charter schools. You know, in my research in doing this, there seem to be three types of people. Either they love them, hate them, or really don't know much about them. But we brought you stories for years on charter schools and their impact right here on the east. To get a better idea of how they work, we head to Beargrass, where a small town school is making a big impact. A charter school in North Carolina is a public school, but it's a public school that has some latitude. Charter schools. The mystery behind them is widely felt across the state. How they function and how they are funded isn't always clear. We are traditional in the sense that it's a public school. It's non-traditional in the sense that people that come here choose to be here. Charter schools in North Carolina are nothing new. State lawmakers allowed charter schools to open in 1996 with a limit set at 100 statewide. We're not going back to Monday. We can't go back in time. Many argue charter schools took off in 2011 when that limit was removed. Currently, there are 18 licensed charter schools in our area. So we have students from Martin County, Beaufort County, Washington County, and Pitt County. Charlotte Griffin is on the board of directors for Beargrass Charter. She views it as a board of education with less restrictions. If you don't carefully look at every aspect, it's not enough to have a desire to do it. You've got to have all of the business aspect of it in place. In recent years, Nine on Your Side has brought you story after story of failing charter schools throughout our area. Griffin says it's often mismanagement of funds that forces charter schools to close. You have to know going in what your limitations are. You have to know, will I be able to have buses to begin with? Will I be able to support a cafeteria? You set your, your school up based on what you know you will realistically be able to deliver. Some say charter schools take state funds from public schools. Griffin argues that's not the case. According to the National Education Association, the state's per student spending is around $8,500 a year. That money follows a student whether they attend a public or charter school. Here at the charter school, it's much more personalized. One of those students is 10th grader Jenna Davenport. We can have anywhere from 12 to 20 kids in our classes. At a public school, there's anywhere from 20 to 30 kids. Jenna drives nearly 40 minutes one way to attend Beargrass. What do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be a dentist because I just realized that science is really something I'm passionate about. That passion is felt by many of the students during my visit to Beargrass, even the teachers like Amy Edwards. It's again a choice to come and it's a choice to stay and if we want to stay they realize they're a part of this family and that's why our kids are successful. Edwards worked more than 20 years in a public school before switching to charter. I'm excited to be here. I'm usually here by seven and usually leaving about five, then I don't mind that. A criticism of charter schools is that they are selective in who can attend. Charlotte Griffin says that's not necessarily the case. Every person that is here has made an application, met a deadline, was placed into an actual lottery, just like you would see with a certified CPA. Each charter school sets how many students they can accept each year based on their allotted budget. Students not selected in time go on a waiting list in case a spot becomes available. Here at Beargrass, whereas other schools, there's not a like group that's going to necessarily exclude you. There's like a place for everybody to fit in here. Despite the mystery surrounding charter schools, students and teachers are staying focused on what's special here. Everybody knows everybody. All the teachers are personable with you. They'll help you. It's just a great place to be. <laughs> Students enrolled in charter schools still have to take the state end of course test. How teachers get them there can be a little different though. And Ken, a lot of good things going on at Beargrass Charter. We talked a lot about charter schools. Some of them don't succeed, but Beargrass really is. Do you know why? Well, a lot of it has to do with, from what I can tell, the people running the school are from this area. They care a lot about the community, and overall that's making a big difference in the success of the school. A big investment in that community. Brandon Truitt in the studio with us. Brandon, thanks.